Next up, last year, legislation was introduced in Congress with the goal of increasing negotiated cash trade. The response from the cattle industry was creating a voluntary framework known as the 75% rule. This rule includes both feeder cattle and packing plant triggers passed on levels of negotiated trade at marketplace participation. Now, after two quarters of implementation, data is out to see how it's going. UNL Livestock Analyst Elliot Denna spoke with Market Journal's Bill Dodd to break it all down. The 75% rule started development last October due to concerns producers in the feeder cattle industry had about negotiations of their fed cattle. After a rough patch with the Holcomb fire and COVID supply chains that led to significant decreases in fed cattle prices, the cattle industry was prompted to examine how competitive cattle prices actually were while building in the notion of price discovery through the four primary ways cattle are transacted in feedlots. One is negotiated trade, which is me and you negotiating on a price and we settle on it. Uh, the other one is negotiated net uh, grid, which is essentially we can grid cattle or they can be paid on a uh, premiums and discounts based upon the carcass merits. And we can negotiate what that base price is that the premiums and discounts are associated with. The third one is uh, this formula, which there's, this has pretty much been a catch-all, but historically it's tried to capture uh, premiums and discounts for carcass merits. And the fourth is formula contract. And so what's unique about negotiated trade is it tends to be the, uh, to serve as what we call the base price for formula contracts. And really what this allowed a producer to do is basically really worry about quantity and the quality of the product. And that base price or the price that they were guaranteed relative to premiums discounts was taken from the negotiated trade. Well, what's happened is, is the level of cattle that are traded on negotiated trade has decreased dramatically. Uh, somewhere in the range of five to 10% of all the cattle in, in the Texas, Oklahoma, New Mexico region are, are traded on negotiated trade. Uh, and you put that in perspective relative to Nebraska, where they're up anywhere from 30 to 35 percent. So large differences. And so some market participants are saying, well, we're negotiating all of this, this information for you and you're using it to obtain higher prices. And so this is kind of where this bill started to come out. And uh, what the 75 percent rule really did was say, OK, we have regional minimum levels of negotiated trade that need to occur. And if they don't, then there's a series of minor and major triggers. What the end result is, if there's too many triggers over time, then the uh, National Cattlemen's Beef Association, or commonly referred to as NCBA, will, will petition the government to have federal laws. With two quarters worth of observation, there has only been one passing and one failing quarter of reporting. The next two quarters will determine whether or not the National Cattlemen's Beef Association will seek legislation on the matter. Yeah, so uh, the rule has really been in effect since January 1st, so we've had two quarters to observe this. Uh, the first quarter uh, did fail, and that was largely a function of the Texas, Oklahoma, New Mexico region failing, and also the Kansas region failing. In addition to, we weren't actually able to get uh, packers. There was some difficulty in trying to get them to, to participate in this and publicly report this information for a variety of reasons. And so that ended up failing um, in that quarter. The second quarter, we actually, it actually passed and only the uh, Texas, Oklahoma region actually failed. Uh, what that means for the industry moving forward is we basically have to pass two more quarters in order for it to uh, NCBA not to seek uh, legislation to establish these regional minimums in the industry. It's important to note the main thing which dictates whether or not a region passes or fails is based mostly on volume. In short, 75% is an attainable figure for robust price discovery. Anything below that mark fails. What that means is it's all about volume of trade. And there's some drawbacks and, and benefits to using that. Uh, one of the drawbacks is, is it doesn't take into a lot of uh, uncertainty or the risk preferences of people. So me and you are negotiating uh, and I'm selling cattle to you, there's probably some desire to make sure I get the, se the sell done 
and I might take a lower price than probably what's fair just because I want the deal to be made. And so that doesn't, that uh, risk isn't captured. And so it's important to note that uh, when we're talking about regions failing or not failing, this policy is strictly based upon volume and, and doesn't capture a lot of these other things. But so when we talk about a region failing, it's strictly on volume. Did they trade a certain level, certain number of cattle over a certain number of weeks? If they did, then they pass. If they, if they didn't quite meet that every week, then, then they fail. With two more quarters of trade yet to occur in the fiscal year, Elliot says he's keeping an eye on any potential policy changes. I'm really interested to look at what's being done on the policy side. Uh, anytime the government uh, starts developing rules, there's uh, potential for a lot of benefit and a lot of what we call dead weight or um, uh, basically red tape in the industry. And, and sometimes that can uh, cause increased costs for producers and, and the way that we do uh, business. And, but sometimes it can solve uh, legitimate problems. And so I'm interested to see kind of how that process is, uh, goes about this fall particularly as we start to renegotiate the mandatory price reporting um, and seeing kind of what's get, what gets wrapped up in, um, in that reauthorization. With two quarters of trade in the books, we'll have to continue to follow the data as it becomes available in order to get the full picture on the impacts of the 75% rule. Reporting for Market Journal, I'm Bill Dodd.